Well, we finally made it folks, the final episode of Prehistoric Planet, Episode 5, The Forest. Before I get into this though, I do want to address something that was brought up last video, thanks to a lot of you commenting, which I actually didn't know, I mean obviously, since everyone pointed it out, but yeah, thanks for everyone letting me know. So I brought up that I thought it was unrealistic that the Troodontid would use burning twigs to start new fires in order to flush out prey you know uh, the f to flush out prey but it turns out that's actually based in realism so there's a bird called the black kites in australia and they've observed that the black kites watch for prey like grasshoppers and lizards that flee from the fire but now there's evidence that the black kites may actually create fires by creating by carrying burning twigs in their talons and dropping them on a patch of savannah away from the original fire. So I thought that's really cool. I'm glad you guys told me. I think that's one of the great thing about documentaries is you always learn something new, whether it be from the documentary or even just I'm, I was able to learn more from you guys. So thank you guys for commenting. And obviously if there's more stuff that I get wrong, please let me know. Cause I do read the comments and I find it really interesting. I always like to make sure that I have the most appropriate or accurate information when it comes to stuff so keep it up guys now episode five the final episode i gotta say for this one it's a little a little emotional not i don't think the episode really tries to be extra emotional in a way at least not like in a super obvious way but like for me personally the intro as it's opening with the opening monologue from david attenborough would just really hit me personally because i'm like wow this series has been very anticipated by everyone and now it's finally here so it's good to it's, kind of, it's always kind of nice to get this kind of like emotional attached feeling because you're sad it's ending but you're also glad that it happened and so now we'll go through the segments of said episode first one Ostroposidon. uh it's a big sauropod i don't remember where they said it was but it's always cool just just to see large sauropods in general, I mean, we're talking about the largest land animals to ever walk the earth. How can you not just be inspired by these creatures? I like how they're knocking down trees like modern elephants, how they will knock down trees in order to get food at the top a lot easier. And I see no reason why they wouldn't. I mean, if you if you have that much weight to throw around, why wouldn't you use it to knock over some trees so you don't have to stretch your neck as far or so you can actually get the leaves that are even out of reach for you. So I thought that was cool. Kind of transitioning into elephants, the next segment follows a herd of triceratops as they go into a cave to find a special clay to eat in order to counteract the toxins that they eat from the plants, which that one definitely reminded me of elephants wandering in the salt caves that'll go in there because they don't get enough salt from their normal diet. So in order to make sure they get the appropriate amount of sodium in their uh, system, they go into these caves and they'll lick the salt rocks there. And there's actually been caves that have been solely excavated by elephants. So it was kind of cool to see the comparison in that sense. Uh, one thing, when the baby triceratops got separated, I knew it wasn't gonna die or go the wrong way or anything. This series has been GPG. A lot of the kills are censored, so I saw no reason why they wouldn't have the baby die such a horrific <laughs> death. That being said, it was still very tender and sweet when it found its mom. And you saw them nuzzle and reunite with each other. It touched my, my black soulless heart. Yes, I know. Probably my favorite segment of this episode Honestly, it's a bit of a toss-up because there was just a lot of solid ones in this one. It was probably the Carnotaurus segment with the male trying to attract the female and get her to mate with him, which was just so funny seeing the arms just flail around and have the blue underflash in as he splays them out. And I think the behind the scenes did a good job at explaining why the arms could potentially serve this purpose because they couldn't really serve much of a purpose for anything else. I really like that. One thing that really stuck out to me is the design of the Carnotaurus. I don't know, there's just something about them. It, like, you could tell that there was, they felt like real animals that you could just reach out and touch. At least for me, this is probably the one that felt the most realistic and I just love the design and the subtle expressions in their face that you can kind of tell. Even when you watch a normal documentary, for example, birds, when you just watch birds, you can see the very subtle emotions and almost kind of the thoughts running through their head. Obviously not their, they're not going to have these super complex thoughts, but it's still cool that you can see these thoughts 
even going through animals that don't normally show a ton of expression. And I think the Carnotaurus especially, whether because of the design or the very subtle animations of it, different acoustics and sounds that these animals most likely would have made in, as opposed to the large roaring mammal-like roars that we see in a lot of documentaries like Jurassic Fight Club or even movies like Jurassic Park. The next segment is, oh, I hate saying this dinosaur's name because I know I always say it wrong. I'm not even going to attempt to say it. I'm just going to put the name up on the screen so you know which one I'm talking about in a picture of it. All I know is that it's nicknamed Pinocchio Rex. That's literally all I can remember from its name. I have its name written down, but I can never pronounce it. So, and even when I have someone read it to me, I still somehow butcher it. But this segment involves, I'll just say Tyrannosaur, I'll take the dinosaur documentary loophole. That way I don't actually, that way I'm still partially correct. <laughs> but this, we see this Tyrannosaur hunting uh, a pack, uh, not a pack, a flock, I guess. Would that be the correct term? I don't know what the term is for a group of uh, overraptia dinosaurs, but it's cool seeing it hunt in this autumn setting. Uh, most dinosaurs, even when we see them in the forest, we see them usually in the summer when it's like bright green or in the jungle. So it's always cool to see it contrasted with the fall. See, it's always cool to see it in a fall in new different setting, kind of why I like to see dinosaurs in snow. You're not it's something you don't traditionally see. The segment after that involves a forest fire and the cycle that comes along with forest fires. So we see Edmontosaurus, and it's the same design as in the Ice World episode. So I think that kind of confirms that even though they just said Hadrosaurs, it is indeed Edmontosaurus, especially since it is in North America. So I see no reason why it wouldn't be Edmontosaurus in those previous episodes. We also get to see a Trociraptor, which uses a smoking twig as bug repellent, so like letting the smoke envelop it, which I thought was pretty cool. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was a real life animal that did something like that today, given that the fact that there are, <laughs> that I learned that there's birds that purposely start fires, I see no reason why a bird wouldn't be intelligent enough to mask its scent with that. At least with uh, smoke. It's kind of weird that we're going to see a Trociraptor here. When I saw the design, I thought it was Pyroraptor. You know, it doesn't make sense because that's in France. But I thought it was Pyroraptor because it reminded me of the Beast of the Mesozoic's Pyroraptor figure that I have. And I'm like, it's Pyroraptor, Pyroraptor. And then David Attenborough said, it's a Trociraptor. I'm like, oh, a Trociraptor. That's not going to be relevant in a couple weeks. Next segment involves the highly anticipated rumor baby Therizinosauruses, which they were super adorable. It involves them trying to get honey from a beehive and they're unable to do so until an adult comes along and just smacks the beehive onto the ground and eats the honey. And there's enough for the little babies. It was just cool to see baby Therizinosauruses since that's something that we don't traditionally see, especially with Therizinosaurus. It's almost always the adult usually fighting a Tarbosaurus. That's pretty much always the role of Therizinosaurus. You can't have a dinosaur documentary without Therizinosaurus fighting Tarbosaurus. This documentary defies that status quo or that harmful stereotype that Therizinosaurus is everywhere. I applaud you, Prehistoric Planet. I, I've said it once, I'll say it again. I love that you take these incredibly famous animals and have them doing behaviors that aren't traditionally seen in most dinosaur documentaries. So I tip my hat to you. The last segment involves that Haxorcopteryx, which is more heavily built than Quetzalcoatlus. I've seen dinosaur documentaries where the Haxorcopteryx looks just like a Quetzalcoatlus, which that wasn't the case when we know this animal was much bulkier compared to Quetzalcoatlus and was very heavily built relatively for a, ter for a pterosaur. So it was cool to see this giant animal, especially when it came out onto the beach and spread its wings and the sun and the sunlight reflecting through the wings or penetrating through the wings, I should say, on the, th on the thumbnail, actually. I don't know. It's just a great shot to end on as we see it take off with this big landing strip and it just flies off to the next island into the sunset. And while that is the last segment, it's not in a way where Dave Antler was like, Dinosaurs were the most magnificent creatures ever. Because who knows, I think they will do a new season of this. I hope it does. I hope this series does well enough that Apple TV says, yeah, we'll do another series. So, you know, here's to that. Hoping we'll get more of this show. 
it was a very great ride. I'll probably do one more video about it, talking about the whole series and my favorite moments from the series, maybe even do like a little top five favorite moments. But as a brief analysis of this whole series and conclusion of it, I gotta say, this was a great dinosaur documentary series, very worth the hype. I recommend checking uh, maybe some of your favorite moments from this season, maybe some things you didn't like. But yeah, I just want to hear your general thoughts on this series, so I'll end that here. So I hope everyone has a good day. Enjoy your dinosaurs and stay safe out there. All right, see ya.